Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In these episodes we'll be looking at this Ham International Concorde 2 that I got and seeing what we can do with it and seeing what modifications are already in there and if it needs any other further modifications. So let's get started. So as you can see somebody's done quite a rough job on the paintwork on top but that can be easily fixed having a look inside um, doesn't look like there's been too much work done on it there's a bit of dodgy soldering around the PLL chip but there's no sign of any EEPROMs or anything which is good And as you can see, the spray job on this side is even worse. But we could fix that. And opening up the other side, everything looks neat enough. There's no bleat module, the cell call has been removed. Got some dodgy wax on the VCO. And we've got an AG PLL02 as well. But everything looks neat enough, especially for a radio at this age. So this radio should be mid-high, super high. So it looks like it's receiving okay. We are transmitting. Let's do some frequency tests. Okay, it's a little bit low, but that's okay, that can be adjusted. I've got it running into a dummy load at the moment. So high band is running a bit low as well. And super high is a little bit low. Okay, that's just fine. That seems to be working nicely. Okay, yeah, happy with that. That's got some wear and tear on the front. But nothing too bad. I've seen them a lot worse. I've got a little bit of black touch-up paint that we're going to go over that. Try and make it just look a little bit better. KC shift seems to be working as normal. A bit disappointed that the bleep module's gone, but never mind. So there's that dodgy VCO. And I'm sure that that's the wrong core inside that VCO. I really am. I'm sure the core, the core should be hollow and made of a different material. But seems to be working. But that dodgy green VCO is not staying in. We're going to fit ourselves a Spectrum VCO that I've ordered from that nice gentleman down south that hand makes them. I don't know why you'd put wax on the top of it and it actually looks like it's candle wax as well, not beeswax. 
which is a bit of a no-no. I'm sure that's the wrong core inside there. I really am. But it works, and it's not staining. As you can see, the VCO unit is in a metal container and it's heavily potted. So I've cleaned up the solder pads. And then we have our Spectrum VCO. Hopefully this should give us a little bit more range on the VCO as well. Which we're going to need. It's capacitor placed. Or should we say replaced back on the back of the board. So the VCO alignment. We need to put a voltmeter on TP1. Which I was is a one two one A four X, so we'll put it on V uh, TP one, and we need to adjust the VCO for the voltages that are specified on the installation sheet. Now I did notice the core on this VCO was very very hard to turn, so I did a bit of work off camera to get that to turn, and there we actually we actually finally get it into lock. So just checking that it's locking everywhere else. Just listening to some SSB on the day I'm doing this voiceover, which is the fifteenth, and it seems to be seems to be a bit coming in. Okay, well, there's our Spectrum VCO fitted. Stay tuned for part two.